Morning at NTV, we are live from Kampala Swenna Conference Center. I'm Andrew Chamagiro Muntua. And see now, in his book, Uncomfortable Laughter, my next guest has compiled some of his best work as an artist from, you know, his famous cartoon of President Museveni and his uh, dripping bottle to the touch of the NUP presidential candidate Robert Chagulanyi. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Supaya Sentongo, welcome to Morning at NTV. Thank you. This Jamagiro. is very interesting to start with. I've, I've, I've read through and it's very... Is, is it already in the bookstores? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's available at the National Theatre, okay. Book Point. Uh-huh. Yeah. Man, you need to go and buy this. First of all, let me first just, um, say something, uh, an overlook uh, of your book with The Observer. The last time you were on NTV, you were fighting for the rights of um, the quarantine returnees that were in the... Um, that was in March, if I should be very exact. Yeah, um, yeah, how, do you think, um, how do you think Ugandan has done since Ugandans uh, are called upon and the fellow travelers after that incident? Well, I think much of uh, what we used to talk about at that time has been seen by many mm. that initially government had all the support of the people. They had the trust, they had the... Uh, that many believed what uh, were being told. Mm. But at that time, we were saying that, look, a number of things are being messed. Uh, uh, look at the way uh, some people are profiteering mm. from the wall, uh, quarantine exercise and all that. Mm -hmm. But there are some who never believed us. Mm. But I think with time, we have all seen mm. that currently what we are faced with, perhaps we would have been at a better place mm. if there was trust in government. Okay. That many of the things that they were telling us then perhaps mm. would have listened better if they were not mixed up with stealing and all that. Mm. So I think it's partly the reason why we are at the stage we are now that mm. even when people are told to wear masks, many do not believe up to now, even with the dates mm. that corona actually exists, they think someone just wants to benefit from it. So from your lenses, mm. you feel like Ugandans have lost trust in the government? I think that is self-evident. Mm. Uh, I don't even have to say it. You can clearly see it mm. uh, written everywhere. Mm. Because why would people still uh, doubt, even where there are reports every day that people are dying, mm. why would there still be doubts that maybe corona is someone's enterprise, it doesn't mm. exist, it all shows that it's a lo uh, loss of trust. Okay. Yeah. Um, was uncomfortable laughter, this mm. very book, already in the works as you were involved in this mm. fight? Oh, yes, it was because um, uh, I was returning from Cambridge at the time when mm. I ended up in, in quarantine. Yes. Yeah, and it, it's during that time when I was there that I got the funding from Kuonyesha mm. um, Art Fund mm. uh, to help compile that book. So it was one of the things that I was coming up um, to do immediately on arriving here. Mm. Of course, I got disorganized in that period. That's oh, yes. why it came out a little, a little later. later. Mm. Yeah, but it was in mind. It was in mind already running. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was this project, how was it conceived and uh, what do you hope this book to teach us as Ugandans on, on a greater scale? So many things and it depends on the reader. For some, it's about the art mm. uh, because generally the art of animation, of uh, illustration by yes. cartoons, of mm. satire by cartoons, it's quite old in Uganda, yet at the same time it has not gotten the kind of the uh, prominence or you know, the attention that it deserves. Mm. So we do not have much material that students of uh, that kind of art can mm. learn from or work with. So that's, that was one of the reasons that it can be used as a reference point. Mm. Second, I think this is some sort of a history of Uganda Where for the been? last about five years but a history that is compressed mm. in very few images telling about a thousand pages. In if I was to write everything that is there, mm. I think it would have taken a lot of space. It would have been a huge volume. But so just, just the write-up. Yes, yeah, so the, just the by looking at those pictures and the small captions, mm. the reader is able to see a lot about our history. The, there is a lot <laughs> going on here. You, you need to get this book yourself. Well, for me, my takeaway from this, it's, uh, it's the context. Mm -hmm. I always read the books, but I always love to get the context on the, on the, on the great divide, how best it's actually going to make me understand the subject at the point mm -hmm. and how best, what's my call to action at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, where can one get this and at how much? It's at uh, the National Theatre mm -hmm. and Book Point at Bugolobi. Mm -hmm. At Book Point, it's 55,000, National Theatre, 50,000. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but I also provided numbers on my Facebook page. Okay. I think one can find the details of oh. who they can contact if they want an autographed copy. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to get one already. You're a cartoonist yeah. documenting Uganda's election. Mm -hmm. From where we are, mm -hmm. what is your opinion on the role of cartoonists beyond just giving us the uncomfortable laughter, but mm. to bring out the real issues that are affecting us as, you know, Ugandans mm. to a greater greed? I think as cartoonists, we are taking, uh, we are trying to fill a space that um, maybe somehow has been purged uh, due mm. to the um, uh, censorship and all that. Mm. That we are commenting, the cartoons you'll find all there, they are sort of commentaries. Oh yes. So we are analyzing, we are critiquing the situation in Uganda, but mm. by using a form, by using a medium that is uh, quite accessible mm -hmm. that even a person that is not so into reading will just look at a cartoon mm. and they are able to get the gist of it of course some cartoons could be a bit complicated yes. yeah but it reaches a wider audience Stop, yeah. i know that <coughs> many of us ugandans we love humor oh yeah that people are looking out for something to laugh about but when it's day, you see it's circulating the jokes that circulate on social media oh, yes. so you say okay if people are looking out for something to laugh about, mm. let me also get this serious message and package it in humor. That they can that laugh about it while... Reach, yeah. wow. So there are people who might take it unseriously, but at some point they realize, I think this is not just a joke. Oh, yes. I think this is not just to laugh about. Oh, yeah. Because we package a huge message in just one small picture. We are mm. able to tell a lot. Mm. So it conserves, uh, it doesn't take a lot of space, mm. it speaks a lot, mm. and it uses a form that appeals to so many people. Okay, mm. now that brings me to my other question. Mm. Are you only inclined to the political mm. um, and uh, political lenses of whatever you draw or mm. you entirely go the whole hog in society? Um, I do not really come to cartooning as someone who wants just to make fun, mm. as someone who is out to make jokes out of everything. Oh, yes. So you'll notice that many of my cartoons are on current affairs, yes. but especially political, political affairs, affairs mm. because I understand that politics affects almost everything we do, even mm -hmm. if you say that, like I've heard some people say, no, for me, I don't want to do uh, to engage in politics. Yes, it's not yes. my thing. Mm. We cannot run away from politics. Everything we do, everything you spend on, a, your way of life, oh, everything yes. is affected by politics. Mm, the decisions that made. Yes, mm. so by deciding deliberately to focus on politics, mm. I, I'm trying to make a contribution to my society. Mm. I'm trying to sort of direct debate, to mm. direct thought, public thought. Oh, yes. So I don't just, uh, I'm not interested in those things that are about making jokes. There could also be others that are not just but you're humor, at critical like sports, mm. uh, like uh, entertainment, yes. music. Sometimes I draw about those, but again, through an angle that takes us back, back to the politics, to, the politics mm. to affairs that affect us Has every this affected day. you, especially with um, where we are in the country, has this mm. affected your relationship mm. with security agencies or some powers that be? Well, the good thing is that we live in a democracy. Mm. Uh, we were liberated and <laughs> our, our future is secured, so I can't <laughs> worry about what is going to happen to me. So I know I'm safe. Yes. I, a number of people really uh, raise these messages, the concerns, uh, mm. uh, alarm, you're going to be arrested. Actually, mm. even as I was coming here, I posted last night on mm. my Facebook page that I will yes. be here. Mm. And if you see the comments there, no, don't go, it's a setup, you're going to be arrested there. Really? It shows <laughs> the level of fear that is out and there. <clears throat> yes, and maybe uh, distrust. Mm. Uh, but I think it's uh, a failure to understand that we live in a democracy, mm. a failure to understand that we have a very good government that liberated us, that mm. brought back the freedoms to speak mm. as mm. we do. Yes, I understand some people have been arrested, oh, yes. some people have been killed, mm. some people may not have the freedom to speak, but I think those are about and I mean agents who are trying to spoil the image of our good government. Okay. Yeah, so personally, I'm not worried about you're that. Ne you're never worried no, about that. No, I'm safe. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, finally, as we're as we finalizing, we're going to elections. It's going to be a very tough season. Mm -hmm. We just have six days mm -hmm. to, to the election day. Um, from where you stand, um, what could be your message to Ugandans as we're headed 
on the ground, you can tell that um, there's a little bit of tension. Uh, pe mm -hmm. People are not so sure what is actually coming. Mm -hmm. But it's our job as Ugandans to take the center stage, to, to run the agenda. Mm -hmm. You as a cartoonist and an artist on this platform where you are, what could be your message to Ugandans in the wake of elections coming up? My message, in short, is first be vigilant. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to look over their shoulders on what is happening around them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they should not be too scared as to make the right choice. Mm. We should know that the vote that we are going to cast, it determines a lot. I know uh, there are so many things around the vote itself, mm. whether it's uh, free and fair, wh whether we are going to, to get what we actually vote for. Oh, yeah. But at least we make that attempt of trying to cast a vote for a better future, mm. to cast a vote for the kind of country that we want to see, mm. but also to try to be brave without being foolhardy, mm. because foolhardiness would mean that you're brave even where you're not supposed to be. Oh, yes. we, have, <coughs> we should have the courage to do the right thing mm. and not to be carried away by these things like uh, the bribes that are moving around, the mm. bugs, big bugs of money. Yes, mm. you can have that money, but we can't have a price that is enough for the future of our country. Wow. Yeah, so that's my message in brief. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That is uh, Dr. Jimmy uh, Spire Sentongo, and that is his message as we're heading to the 2021 election. You and I need to be very vigilant, but just so you know, you can get yourself a copy of uh, Uncomfortable Laughter. It's one of those you need to get yourself, and uh, uh, it's by Jimmy uh, Sentongo. Uh, he has told you it is at National Theatre. Just go get yourself a copy. Laugh. It's very interesting. It's very contextual in a way and has different perspectives of the five years to where we are today. We'll take a break and we'll be back shortly.